Uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. And in this video, what I'd like to do is do a review of another cheap insulation tester. This particular unit is the OM8021 from KK Moon. Uh, this is predominantly available in the UK from eBay uh, slash AliExpress rather than uh, Amazon stores uh, that actually hold a stock. You usually have to import this unit in from China. It's the same sort of mold as the two VC60B units you see on the right there. Uh, first one from Vichy and second one from Winspeak that I reviewed in a previous video. And in comparison, this unit usually retails somewhere between 55 up to 70 pounds. So as with the other two units, the KK Moon unit comes in a cardboard box. However, this one does have a little canvas bag in which to carry the meter around with. Um, it is a very, very basic bag. Um, there is a little carry handle here that's kind of on the inside, uh, but you can pull it out through and then you can carry the unit around in a little handbag style. Uh, the uh, unit does come with a set of instructions. However, unlike the other two units that have this little booklet with them that give you little test circuits and bits and pieces like that. Uh, this is just an A4 sheet, uh, very basic instructions and specifications, just a little bit of uh, text to tell you how to use the unit. So much more basic approach from KK Moon than you get with the other two. Lead-wise, uh, exactly the same leads and crocodile clips. PVC, uh, not the nicest of things. They are Cat3 1000 volt rated, both crocodile clips and leads are as well. And what I will just try and do, if I can hold the lead up to the camera, and hopefully you can see here that it says Victor along here. Um, I did struggle to find out who the original equipment manufacturer was for these units and I thought it was Victor Instruments. Uh, with these leads here, having that Victor on there, that kind of confirms a little bit more that the unit is the original design of Victor Instruments and it's built on a license from various different manufacturers. Um, and obviously KK Moon themselves have decided to give it an OM8021 designation rather than the VC60B+. Plus. That the other units generally stick with. And so this is the unit itself, um, fairly rugged construction, uh, got this full rubberized body going around the sides and the back there. Uh, it's, this isn't removable, this is uh, must be glued onto the actual case. Uh, as with the other two units you've got uh, four terminals at the top here for connection to the test circuit. We've got L and E for insulation testing, and then voltage measurement is on the G and the ACV jack there. In terms of functionality, you have AC voltage measurement up to 750 volts, uh, exactly the same as the other two units. Uh, however, this doesn't do DC volts that the Vichy unit does and it also doesn't do continuity that the Vichy unit also does so. In auxiliary functions, it's exactly the same as the wind speak unit there. Uh, you then move on test voltage wise, and we've got 100 volt, 250 volt, 500 volt, and 1000 volt test voltages. So this gives the extra 100 volt test that neither the Vichy unit nor the wind speak unit can do. Backlight is manually controlled on the button here. So you can turn it on and then press it again to turn it off at your leisure. Range is either 200 mega ohms or 2000 mega ohms, two gig ohms. That applies to all four test voltages. A similar functionality to the wind speak unit that's also got a two gig ohm range and the, the range button there to change between the upper and lower ranges, unlike the Vichy, that is automatic throughout the ranges uh, but as a limited range the two gig ohms is only on the thousand volt 
at uh, 500 volt and 250 volts you're at 200 mega ohms on the Vichy unit uh, and then finally we have the test button here and as you see when you hit the test button this is a locking button again so it will hold the test voltage on until you press it again and you get the, uh, the little hazard warning symbol on the screen um, that you put it on there and you also get the HV on light there as well and we do see here the leads are uh, I said uh, capped 3000 volts um, this is, I presume they mean cat for 600 volts, uh, it seems to have come as a GAT rather than a GAT, don't know. Um, there is no independent verification or indication of that. It says here that it is CAT3 as per IEC 1010, uh, but there is no independent markings. No serial number on this either that you got on the other two units. So accuracy wise, Manufacturer spec on it is plus or minus 4%, uh, plus two digits. During the test, it came out as 3.16%. Uh, and as you can see from the graphs, the accuracy really hurts down at the bottom end for all the ranges. Test resistance is below 2 mega ohms. Uh, the accuracy did wane quite a bit, as you can see from the first graph. Um, to make a bit more sense of the graph, I take out those really bad measurements. You can see this in the second graph here and you can see in actual fact across all the test voltages of the accuracy is pretty similar uh, and that's a similar sort of story with the other two units as well you tended to find that the accuracy down at the bottom end was much worse than it was at the upper end of the scale um, but then these installation testers are be more interested in getting high readings with these rather than the lower readings so i set up to do some output voltage measurements uh, i'm powering the instrument from 9 volt power supply, it's 6A batteries as per the other units. Um, how good is it? Now you see there, turn the light on there. You can see we're on 100 volt test on 10 mega ohms, and we're kicking out on the meter 104 volts. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, it's actually got the minus symbol up there, so it looks like this insulation tester actually puts out uh, an opposite polarity. To the vast majority of other tests, you can see I'm on L on the red here, which is going into the positive V there, and black the earth is going into common. And so, get the uh, polarity out. I need to swap the leads on this, and then you can see we then get 104 volts out with the correct polarity on this. And that will take this down to 7.8 volts. So you can see that it dropped down to 103.8 volts. So unlike the other units that suffered when the battery pack voltage varied, this unit seems to have a better capability in the regulation of the output in reference to the battery voltage changing. So I'll go 250 volts as well. On a 10 mega ohm load, it only reaches 248 volts. So we struggle a little bit in that respect whereas the other units would pump out the right test voltage at 10 mega ohms uh, 500 volts and, uh, so on that one we've got 503 volts so we're okay with that one uh, go to a thousand volts and on that one we've only got 798 volts output on that one so this unit does tend to struggle a little bit what i'm just going to do Let's deload this even more and put it into a high voltage probe. So we just reconfigured uh, and now I've got a high voltage probe in the circuit and so this should deload the unit even more. Now we'll see there you can see we're actually on the wrong range. So go to there you can see we're onto a giga ohm now and you can see our net can now get 1012 volts coming out there. Uh, Strip down to the 500 worked anyway, but now I've got 523 coming out. Uh, 250 volts is the other one that failed, but now I've got 254 volts coming out onto a 1 giga ohm load. Um, so you see again issues with the output capability of the voltage circuit. It's struggling to drive the correct voltage when the meter is loaded up. 
So I'll reconfigure this to show what happens when you load the instrument up, but I'm fully expecting this to fail on a one milliamp load test. So we're up to 50 volts, we're up to 25 ohms, so pull our light back on. We should be seeing one milliamp on the screen now, but we're only seeing uh, 0.59 milliamps. So uh, 0.25 mega ohm it will be, so 0.2 mega ohm, so the reading is fairly accurate, but only 0.59, 8 milliamps coming out when it should be 1 milliamp. Let's reset that and we'll take it up to 500 volts. And we'll go again. And you see, so the reading's fairly okay, but only 0.43 milliamps coming out, so again, this unit is not compliant with the IEC standard for a one milliamp load test. And that's the thousand volts um, or mega ohm, and you can see 0.33 milliamps coming out. Uh, and that's why the voltage is dropping off as well. It just can't supply the correct loading when the circuit is under test. And we'll just reconfigure. I just put them straight through so that you can actually uh, see what the short circuit current is. So you see short circuit current wise 1.15 milliamps on the thousand volts, 500 volts, 1.15, 250 volts, 1.14. So pretty consistent across the test voltages, 100 volts, 0.98. That's a little bit low on the 100 volter. So yeah, not the best of performance from the output circuit on this insulation tester, but it's kind of in line with the other two VC60B units. And if I'm honest, it's a, a little bit better, um, but it still fails the IEC standard tests. So I'll knock all this down out of the way and we'll see if we can take a look inside the unit. Okay, so we have her apart. Um, turns out I was wrong. This is indeed a rubber boot that fits around the outside of the instrument, a separate rubber boot. Um, it is actually extremely tight. It's actually uh, around the lip inside here on the front and on the back here around this lip that covers up the screws that hold it together. Um, so I need some levers on that to leave the boot away from the outside of the case and get into it. Uh, but anyway, once we're into it, uh, we have here the outer case. We do have a threaded insert for the battery cover, uh, which is separated, um, but it's not captivated into the cover itself, so uh, easy enough to lose. And then we've got a little connector that goes onto the back of the PCB, so it can be the back cover can be taken away completely. As you can see there, you've got the six connections for six battery cells and this one is unused at the bottom here but the case is pretty clean inside nothing of major concerns in there you can also see the lip around the inside of the case where the two halves go together to give you some protection and then the ceiling and then this outer cover goes around the whole lot anyway so in, in that respect the the build is quite robust uh, we'll deal with the front of the case first. There's the input jack for the external supply voltage. You can run this from a mains power supply as well as the internal battery pack if you so do desire. Um, test buttons in there and a little lens for the LED, for the HV on LED I should say. Uh, and there's your switch in there to do the function selection. Uh, see whether this uh, does come out there we go so there and, and then we're actually clipped in so all the detent is with inside the actual switch there everything is all held together just through individual screws uh, into the plastic casing and there's no machine screws involved in holding any of the case together or the PCB inside the case at all so that's all there is for them. Check him out of the way and we'll get onto the main PCB. We'll flip him over. So on the front here, you've got the selector switch tracks and then the little LED 
for the HV on, and then the three bush buttons. There's the high voltage transformer. It's quite quite a nice module actually. Not bad at all. And move around. You've got the LCD, the backlight for the LCD, and there's your input jack for the mains PSU. So input jacks for the actual test function are soldered directly onto the back of the board here. You can actually see the board is actually pretty clean. Um, no real major concern there, unlike uh, the other two VC60B units that I looked at, where there's a lot of solder flux and residue uh, left over here. Uh, the board is very, very clean. Um, input protection wise, I can't see any PTCs. I just do see, I think these are varistas down here, and there's no isolation slots around any of the input either. So the Cat 4 rating could be a little bit suspicious. Here's your main drive MOSFET for the HV transformer. It doesn't look like it's soldered onto the copper pad there at all, interestingly enough. And the rest of it seems pretty good. There is a calibration pot there called VREF. Not sure what that one's for. Maybe worth powering it back up and taking another look at that. But yeah, fairly good clean build, mixture of surface mount and through hole components. But yeah, not too bad at all. Certainly uh, a much better build uh, PCB wise and also physical construction wise. I kind of feel this is a much better build than the other two units that I looked at. Okay, we'll pop them all back together, ready for summing up then. So there it is, there's the OM8021 insulation tester from KK Moon. I'm pretty confident it's a VC60B plus derivative. Seems to be slightly better implemented than the Windspeak and the Vici versions of it, but it still isn't an IEC compliant tester that I would be required to use for my kind of work. It does have the fairly high insulation resistance reading capability across all the test voltages, has the extra 100 volt test voltage that neither of the other two units have. However, it doesn't have DC voltage measurement and a continuity test function that the feature unit does have there. But you do get a case with it. So yeah, it probably is worth the slightly extra money that you do pay for this unit in comparison to the other two units. But as I say, it's still not IEC compliant, so very limited use. But perfectly good insulation tester if you just want to play around with bits and pieces, get to know how to use an instrument, and don't test any critical systems. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next one.